Welcome to Business Made in Montana. I'm Sarah Lennox. Montana musicians know where to go to find the finest acoustic instruments. These instruments, made in a brick schoolhouse in Logan, Montana, are known around the world. Customers appreciate the careful craftsmanship behind world-famous Weber mandolins. We have fun in this company. We have fun. They're proud of what they sell. I'm not in it to get rich. I'm in it because I love it. And, and same with all the other luthiers here. I had gone to the local music store to buy mandolin strings. They were out. They sent me to this little garage building downtown Bozeman, and it ended up being the Flatiron Mandolin Company. Went in there to buy my strings and thought, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, he was the real eager guy at Flatiron that was, you know, doing everything. And then all of a sudden one day he's the sort of the head builder at Flatiron. And, and all of a sudden his, uh, he's the guy I went to talk to if I stopped by there. And he was the guy in the front office. So it was, the evolution was very quick for Bruce. But the tried and true uh, instrument is maple back, spruce top, maple neck, ebony fingerboard. It's a recipe you can't really fail with. This is where the, uh, we take the rough wood, and glue it into usable sizes, and, uh, and it's, it's milled to a certain part. Necks, backs, tops, all of the parts and blocks that go inside the instrument, a part that's ready for the luthier's hands to go, go to work on. Let them pay attention to the detail they need to, rather than pay a lot of attention to, uh, to removing excess material which doesn't take a lot of skill. At this point, you can start to hear some tone to the instrument. Uh, it all has to come together to create basically a bell, something that'll reflect the, the uh, sound into the instrument. Every process from this point on is to build on that, that tone, improve it, get a little more volume, and just bring out the life that, that's there already. And, uh, Gibson guitar, Corporation bought Flatiron shortly after I started working there. Gibson merged with Flatiron because Flatiron was making an F5 that Gibson could not make out of Nashville successfully. And so for the next 10 years, Gibson and Flatiron were the same thing. We could order up a mandolin and Bruce would build it. You know, it would be a custom shop Bruce mandolin. They were great. And then by 94 or 5, he was too busy with handling the corporate stuff. And I think that was really frustrating him. And then it shut down the end of 96. And uh, then Joe and Bruce and I sat down at Joe's house and uh, with some graph paper and pencils and uh, really talked about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. We chose to uh, come back here and take our chances. Montana's fantastic. Some of us had the opportunity to move in the past. Um, and we chose not to, and because of that, um, we, we exist today. Let's face it, people in Montana aren't here for the quick buck. You're here because quality things happen in this state, and it's because people look you in the face and don't tell a lie. It's been an adventure. We could, we could really feel that something was going to happen, but I had no idea <laughs> it was, was going to grow into uh, what it's become today. It's really something. And it's just, it takes an incredible amount of detail. If you're not passionate about this work, it would drive you nuts. This, this mandolin will, will end up in somebody's hand uh, being played one day. And uh, I want them to be as happy playing it as I am building it. But he wants to make a high quality instrument that he has his name on and can take humble pride, if we can say it that way, that that uh, name is on the peg yet. He takes no credit for any of this. It all goes to his employees. The world has beat a path to Weber's door. That's the reality of Weber. Real players really choose them. I